What's up everyone? Today we are looking at the head unit and the dash of the Land Cruiser Prado GX. Now the Prados are still lacking behind in technology because they still have these old resistive displays. Now Toyota has decided to change that and from this year they're starting to implement CarPlay in Android Auto. Unfortunately this model doesn't have it so we're stuck with this 8 inch display but we'll just take a quick look at it. So here is your home display where you've got your two sort of monitors that you have that you can decide whether you want the GPS and the Bluetooth or you can do three as well. So you click, that's your home button, it'll show that. You then go to your apps and we'll start with the setup. See what we've got, general, you can do the time, the units, whether you want to beep, that beep annoys me so I'm going to turn it off. I feel like the orange isn't too bad, let's go with the orange. QWERTY keyboard, it does allow you to scroll, although very slow as you can see. The startup image, the screen off, and just more general settings. So here's your home screen where you can decide whether you want two panels or three panels. I'm happy to leave it as three, nah, yeah, let's keep it as three panels, sure. And there is your three panels. Now we go to apps again, go back to setup, voice. This basically dictates the volume of the prompts and the recognitions and all those settings there. Here is your display. It's just your contrast and your brightness really. There's not really much more you can do with it. And your camera, brightness and contrast as well. Nothing too exciting. Then we have your Bluetooth settings. So this is where it shows all the phones that are connected. Now I'm just going to remove one if it lets me remove. Let's remove that, yes, etc. Easy as that. If you want to add one, that's how you'll pair it and get it going. Telephone, can, it's basically just another Bluetooth option. Unnecessary setting there. Audio, you can't choose the bass, treble and mids from here. You have to go actually through the audio settings. And vehicle, the vehicle customization. Door lock settings, remote to press unlock. Select doors to unlock all doors. Basically, whether you want how loud. It is quite loud, the beep. So I'm, oh, yeah, okay, I was going to go a bit further, but anyway. The unlock feedback tone. So it goes beep, beep, and it is a bit loud, so I'm just going to put it a little bit down because it can be a little bit annoying. Annual light settings, headlight auto off, and interior lights off timer. That's fine by me. So there are your setup options. Now we're just going to go straight to audio because that's basically the only other thing you can do here. And you can just choose your source. You've got AM, FM, then you have your disc, USB, your AUX and your Bluetooth. And there's, you can't really see those because they're grayed out. We'll go back to audio and you click sound here and that's where you can change your treble, mids, your bass, your disbursement of where you want your audio throughout the vehicle and your DSP, the sound levelizer and the surround sound and that's basically it, you're stuck with that. You can go to your FM and you can just seek, it'll just go front and back or that'll go backwards. Let's go scan, let's go 1032 and let's see if we can save it as a preset. And you know what, let's go backwards to 103.2, save it, there you hold it down, and there it goes, it saves it. Settings, nothing as well. So there's basically the, the most part, there's your GPS, which is so dated, as you can see. You've got destination, my route, traffic, which uh, event list, all events. And it will show you there's some traffic here and there. You can click it and it will show you where it is. And you can just ignore it. Or consider it. So there you go. Now let's go. If you want to put the GPS in, you'll just go to menu. Destination. Let's just put that one there because it's the first one that pops up. Click select. And route planning. So takes its time just to sort out the route, but once it gets there, and then you can click start, which I don't really want to because it is a 
12, nine hour drive away. Let's not do that. And there, okay, I really want to cancel this. Itinerary, dismiss, and menu. Oh, hold on, let's go back. And there is your cancel route. So as you can see, it's a pretty dated screen, but that's what we're gonna have to deal with in the meantime. We then, we then move to the dashboard. Now you've got uh, a few options. So you've got your analog speedo on the right, your analog rev count on the left, your heat and your fuel. Your, that is a warning. So here's your first option. You've got the eco indicator. Thankfully a digital speedo, no heads up display or anything. A sway warning to tell us when to rest. A, and here is just a literal blank black screen. Here's the after start. I have driven average of 20 k's an hour at a horrendous 13.7 liters per hundred. Then we have after reset. So ever since you reset, three hours, average 12.7. After refuel, I'll get 12, 1,200 k's because it's a 150 liter tank. And then we have the average overall 11.2. So we go this way, it's your steering angle. That's just there your north, south, east, or your compass basically, and your audio. And you can push for the source. That tells you whether your cruise control is on, your limiter, and your active lane assist. Which I just turned on, and I'm just gonna turn it off. Just keep getting these warnings because the car isn't on completely. No messages to worry about, and let's click here. Sensitivity, sensitivity of your lane keeping assist, your sway warning, and the sway sensitivity. Not bad. Forward collision system on and how sensitive, let's go medium. Your meter settings, language, units, eco, switch settings, nothing too crazy. Pop-up display, your color, it's a few blue. your spare tire back and default settings. And that's basically it we come back here and we'll put it up to the speedo which we want to see and there are your interior head unit and dash of the Land Cruiser Prado as for the other tech you've got your AC here it isn't dual climate or triple climate like the higher end models but it still gets the job done you don't have any seat heating or anything you also have a 12 volt connector, a USB, and an aux. Let's have a look here. There's your 12 volt connector, one USB for audio and charging, and your aux port. It would have been ideal to have maybe two USB ports here, one to charge, one for audio. There is also one of these 12 volt connectors in the back row for the passengers. Would have been ideal to have a few USB ports there as well. But there is a power outlet in the boot which is really good as well it would have been good to have a few usb ports there again but you can just plug in your usb charger and it'll do the same job essentially remove this water bottle so we can see what we've got down here there you've got your high and low um, high four-wheel drive low range whether you're going to go off-roading put it into low range there is your hill descent assist traction your differential and your second start under here, you've got your where you want your air conditioning to go. Basically, instead of just choosing, some cars will have one button to click all three. This has three buttons. So your face, straight to your face and feet, and then your feet, and then the front and the rear defogger. There is how much pressure you want to come out, and there is if you want it to cycle. And that's basically the tech that you've got here. Your steering wheel will have your audio and volume controls here. And there are your options to change for the dash. And here is your cruise control, lane keeping assist, and that tells you how far to, how close or far to the car in front you wanna be when you're in active cruise control mode. So there it is, your Land Cruiser Prado GX, all the tech features. We hope soon that it'll get more upgrades, but for now it's still pretty decent. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We don't feel like throwing it